going on guys? Noah from Kicking Their Bass TV. Here with another video and I know you guys have been wanting to hear what we did at World Finals, me and Foshi. Um, had a pretty decent finish, I'm not going to lie. Um, at World Finals, we really wanted to win that thing, you know what I'm saying? But we led the state of Georgia and I'm proud to say that we did that. So, um, And we had a blast. That's pretty much all that matters. Yeah, we did work our butts off for that tournament. We were hoping to come with a first place finish, but it's not. You're not going to win every tournament, guys. It's just how it is. Um, if you can win every tournament and you fish 50 tournaments in a row, you win every tournament. You come to me, I'll give you five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's a good job. But seriously, guys, um, you can't win every tournament. So if you if you lose a tournament or you don't place where you want to, don't get yourself down. Keep your head up. Keep flying, guys. Um, we went or I went from. World Finals and Nationals, like three days in between, you know what I'm saying? So I went from kind of mad at myself, not really mad, but just not satisfied from World Finals going into Nationals, you know what I mean? It was just like, so you got to get your mind onto the next thing. Don't worry about it. That's in the past. You can't change what's in the past. So let's go ahead and go over what happened. So we were fishing the first day. And um, or I'm gonna go ahead and start back a little bit. So we we practiced for this tournament, which was World Finals on Lake Pickwick. I'll post all the Pickwick videos, vlogs, um, tournament video. The tournament video, by the way, I really think it was the best, one of the best videos I've ever made. If you guys could please go check that out, it has almost about 10,000 views. Um, you guys really showed me a lot of love on that video with the likes and everything. Really appreciate it. Um, but pretty much it all started two weeks before the tournament. You know, we were, we went down there, we practiced for two days. And the first day we had around 20 pounds, or first day we had around 22 pounds, second day we had around 20 pounds. So I mean, we were, we were on the fish. We found the fish. They were out on those main lake ledges, you know. They are by the river channel. They are in that deep water where it's coming up the shallow. It's next to the river channel. Pretty much we are sitting out in the middle of nowhere, you know what I'm saying. And then we had some backup spots like bridges and stuff like that. that just in case something happened, because you never know what's going to happen. You need to have a backup plan. That way we could go to that. So um, we fished then, and we had around 20 pounds both days. So we had around 40 pounds total. I mean, that's amazing. That, that I would have wanted, you know what I'm saying? So we come back two weeks later. We we're hoping not too much would change. We knew it wasn't going to be exactly the same, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so pretty much what we caught this fish on that the two weeks before the tournament, we caught him on a jig, caught some on one of the big old Ben Parker spoons there, that boat flipped a freaking five pounder in the boat with a big Ben Parker spoon, that's dangerous, but um, caught some on that, first time I ever caught one on a big spoon, so that was pretty cool, um, mostly jig and everything, but anyways, um, going on, we practiced two days before the tournament, so we pretty much scouted the first day, we're just, we're more of scanning, you know, we're going over those spots, we found those fish, we're trying to figure out um, if those fish are still there, we're their stage, we're marking waypoints, we're marking lineups, um, we're going to come, 50 foot before this, I'm just going to say this, brush pile, and um, just get the lineups right and everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, just make sure we're prepared. So we're pretty much scanning the first day, um, found some fish, we back off, fish them, and if you get a bite, we leave, you know, if, if we hook one, one, we call it one and done, one you leave. You don't want to sore lip your fish, you just want to make sure they're there. So we were catching some of them, and the ones that we were catching were small. You know, they're, they're only a couple pounds. The biggest one's probably like three pounds the first day. We didn't catch too many. Um, I broke I broke one off that was really good on a drop shot. If you guys watched the vlog, I know you saw that. Um, which is that pretty, that hurt. I mean, I'm not trying to catch all the big fish during practice, but just to know how to go on and broke off, that stinks. Um, but pretty much just didn't have the biggest fish. So we went out the second day. And we're going out there and we're going to scan again. <clears throat> what we noticed were those fish weren't exactly where they were the day before and or two weeks before. Those fish were kind of moving. You know, they, they, they were more scattered. They, they weren't, we were looking for them on the bottom, like just stacked up on the bottom. You know, we we're finding schools of like 20 fish just lined up, you know. And then there's other fish layered feet feet within that and um, we're finding tons of fish and then that day they started to move and we're just thinking to ourselves what's going on we're trying to analyze it you know you got to break it down this makes that's what um, really really makes a good fisherman and a moderate fisherman you got to break it down guys because you, you got to be ready for 
every situation that comes and hits you in the face. Um, so we just had to stop. We were, we were really trying to focus on, oh, the fish are here, the fish are there, the fish are here. But we really needed to zone in on what was really happening. You know, we had to get in our head. We had to get off what we were confident with for a second there and say, this isn't what the fish are doing. You know, we, we had to really reanalyze it and say, what are the fish doing? Then we started to locate them. What we noticed the fish were starting to do. We were finding the fish on those main lake ledges and or humps. The fish started to move towards, I guess you could call it, those secondary ledges or humps. So they're moving in a little bit shallower in the ones that weren't near the river channel. So I guess you could call it secondary humps not near the river channel. It was a little further back. It was like, a, I, would, I would call it a step closer and shallower. <clears throat> um, so pretty much what we had to do is find all new spots. All those spots were useless that we found two weeks prior and the day before prior. Um, those spots were useless, you know, they were trash. Um, I want to call them 100% useless. You could sit on them all day, you could probably catch a fish or two, you know. But we wanted to be on the fish, we wanted to find the fish. What are the fish doing? We wanted to catch them, you know. We wanted to just have it down, packed. It's our last day of practice, so we pretty much scanned the rest of the day. Found some new spots, found this one spot that was really good. I, we saw some big fish on the graph, and I was like, all right, let's just test it one time, you know? So we backed off. I got the boat aligned into the wind and everything, and I had my line up. I was like, oh, we're about 100 foot away from where the fish are at. Fish are lined up this way, so I'm gonna kind of throw it at angle so I'm in the strike zone. Um, and sure enough, through first cast, working my jig, boom, five pounder, here's about, Probably about six pounds. Gosh, I mean, got that, got that on camera and everything. Big fish. I mean, six pounder in practice. That's freaking awesome. Um, but not the day before the tournament. You know what I mean? Um, I would love to catch a six pounder any day, except day before the tournament. Um, but we knew they were there. We we're like, all right, you know, this this isn't the only big fish. Kept our heads up. We we're like, this isn't the only big fish. This fish are gonna stay here. Um, so that was pretty much. And then my dad caught a small mouth on this little rocky point, I guess you could say that was pretty much a backup plan just in case crazy crap happened. Um, so we found a backup plan, found some new spots, found a spot with some really big fish, and we knew they were there, we knew they were stacked up. So come on tournament day number one. First spot we go to, of course, the spot where I caught that six. Go to that spot, fishing it for a little bit, boom, I, I get one. Really into the boat. It's about two and a half pounds. So I get that fish in the boat. As I'm putting um, the cold ball on them and everything, put them in the live well, um, Foshi, she gets one. It's about the same size as mine, maybe a little bit smaller, probably about two pounds, minus two and a half pounds. I'm like, all right, this is the start, the start, you know. So it was like that. We caught the fish just right on. So we we're like, all right, we're going to stay here. Um, if we start to catch too much, we're going to move off and see the fish for the other days, you know. Um, but we kept on fishing it, and sure enough, boom. Um, I believe Lorian caught a really good one there, and um, I believe it was around three pounds. Caught one there, and then she hooked into another fish, and it was I really want to say about seven eight pounds. And if you guys watched the tournament video, you guys saw it. She got up to the boat, and um, literally right at the net, it jumped off. And if you guys haven't seen that video, go watch the tournament video. It it. It was a giant, I mean, it was probably a good seven, eight pounder. Um, and when I'm into the net, see this at the end of the net right here? Here's the fish. Like, it, it was, I can't even explain how close it was. It was, it was just inches. And the fish just jumped off, and that hurts, you know. When you lose eight pounds, say your fish is, your smallest fish is one pound, think about adding seven pounds to your total weight, you know what I mean? I mean, that's just insane. So, that happened. Then we went to one of our other spots. I threw in there, and I caught like a four and a half, boom. Was, um, the biggest fish of that day and then I believe she caught one that was around three and we ended up with a total weight of like 13 pounds almost 14 pounds um, we're sitting in like 16th place right there and we're leading Georgia they the way they did it was a little bit different so um, we're sitting around 16th place going into the second day um, this fish has started to move guys um, the first spot Laura Ann got a good one got into the boat Pretty big fish. Went to our second spot. Got another one, um, and then we had ended up having to hit our backup plan. Like I said, my dad caught a smallmouth. 
um, and we picked up a small mouth there, which is pretty crazy. Um, Save our butt. We ended up having like 11 pounds that day um, with like a five pound kicker. So that was pretty good. And we're still leading Georgia then. So we're going to go on to the third day and we're not going to have to go into the second chance qualifier. We're pretty much going to automatically qualify for the first 20 top 20 teams. And by the way, there was like 180, 190 votes in this whole tournament. So there's a lot of teams. Um, going into the third day, just catching tons of small fish. And we messed up really bad right here. And this is one of the most important things you need to know. <clears throat> You need to look over the rules, guys. You need to make sure you understand everything about the tournament. When you need to check in, what's the length on the fish, you know, if it's five fish limit, if it's a three fish limit. You just need to know all this simple information. It may sound simple, but you just need to know it. Well, we thought how they did it was, and I, I'm not, I, I exactly don't remember now, but it was like Tennessee was 12 inches and Alabama was 14 inches for all fish. And. I'm not sure if that's backwards or if not, I don't remember, um, but we were catching, four, we, we thought, or actually it was 15 inches, so we thought the limit size was 15 inches. We were catching 14 inches and 14 and 3 quarters, alright, like on the money, like I mean it was just there, and we're throwing them back, and the matter of the fact is 12 inches was a keeper. And we're sitting here throwing all these fish back. I mean, we cut out easy, easy eight pounds. Just threw, just threw eight pounds back. Then I missed about a five and a half, six pounder at the boat. Like he just was coming at my bait. I was starting to chatter bait at the time. He just freaking darted at it and then just took off, took away. And I was like, man, that sucks. You know, it was, it was right there. Um, just, just couldn't bite it. Um, but pretty much we would have like eight pounds. We're heading back in and. We finally realized, wow, it was only 12 inches, and I mean, that, that screwed up the whole tournament for us, you know. We probably could have fished the next day, we could have had a possible chance of pretty much winning the whole thing, you know. But at that point, we were pretty much whooped, you know, and we are just thankful to get where we got. We led Georgia, and um, I mean, that was an accomplishment for us. And we were happy with it, we had a good time, and we got to fish, heck, you know, three days of the tournament. It was a good time. So pretty much what we caught it on was pretty much everything was on a football jig. I'm not going to lie. Um, I did throw a chatterbait the last day in which I caught about that 8, 10 pounds on. It was a chatterbait. Um, but, of course, I didn't weigh any of this fish in. But the jig I'm using, um, one of my buddies hand customizes Chattahoochee jigs. Um, it's just a football jig. And it's a one-ounce jig. So it's pretty heavy. Um, and this one's in brown. It has a little bit of green flakes in it. And then the trailer just a regular rage curl. <clears throat> it's a green pumpkin with a little bit of chartreuse on the back. And um, that's the bait that we're throwing. We're just killing them on it. I mean, they're just tagging the crap out of it. And the pole I'm using, or the reel I'm using, is Abu Garcia Revo Rocket. It's a really great reel. And the reason I'm using it is because I'm hooking this fish out deep, and I'm pretty much wanting to get this fish to the boat as quick as possible. I don't want to lose those fish as large amounts. I love the spit the lure. So pretty much that 9 to 1 gear ratio reel got the fish to the boat really quick. And then I have a Legend Tournament by St. Crew Rods, and this is a 710 heavy power rod. This is a swim bait rod, not a jig rod, but I am using it for a jig. I was using that extra long rod. Like I said, I wanted to get this fish out from deep. I wanted to make sure I got a good hook set and I got the fish to the boat. Um, it, yeah, it will wear you out when you're working and stuff, but heck, it's worth it. Never lost a fish on it, and just did all performance-wise. It was great. Um, if you have any questions over any Abby Garcia reels or St. Crew Rods, I have plenty of reviews on my page you can go check it out um, but pretty much guys that's what happened at world finals we did pretty good if you guys want to go watch the vlogs i have like five vlogs out for it and i have the tournament video which the tournament video is phenomenal in my opinion and if you guys can please show the channel some love and go check out that video that would be amazing so if you got some little tips out of this and um you enjoyed watching the video please give the video a thumbs up be sure to go check out my latest vlogs with my dad twerking and everything see you guys next time